right, folks, time for another amp dyno and not an unboxing. Um, reason why is because this amplifier didn't come with a box. This is the AudioPipe APMI 1500. Um, this amp says 1500 watts on there, but uh, I've already looked at the owner's manual, and even the owner's manual says it's not going to do 1500 watts. Owner's manual, in fact, says I should expect 1414 watts. So we can get you focused in there. 1414 watts at one ohm. Um, that is at 1% THD. So, um, I don't know why they didn't call it just the 1400. I guess 1500 sounds better. But the reason I don't get a box for this is I got this from an Amazon warehouse deal. So normally these are about 130 bucks. I paid a little bit under that. I paid uh, right around 100 bucks and some change for this. So saved a little bit on there. I didn't think it was going to come minus the box. Um, but it did come with everything that you're going to find in the package for you. So beyond the fact of an amplifier that's in pretty nice shape. Um, it's got a scratch here or there on there. Amazon warehouse deals are... Um, open boxes and someone tried to use them at some point and uh, returned it for some reason. So this one comes in pretty decent shape. Comes with a pretty nice looking remote base knob and cable. Um, these have a nice kind of steel aluminum end piece for the knob itself and a, a vented metal exterior. So that's, that's pretty nice. Comes with a fuse holder and uh, a fuse, which I'm not going to use because I don't need this on my test bench. Your product registration and of course your owner's manual. Um, so that would typically come in the box if I had a box. Uh, this thing is uh, pretty compact here. I mean I think the MI is supposed to stand for the mini series for the audio pipes. I'm going to just flat out say right now, I really don't know a ton about audio pipe. Uh, I know they've been around for years. I know some people love them and swear by them. I know some others call them audio poop. So I don't know which one, which way to go with this. I don't know uh, what's a better describer, but it says it's mini. So it's uh, 13 and a half inches long, which for 1400 watts is fairly compact. Only about a little under seven inches wide. And height wise, we got just about a little over two inches so it is pretty many for the amount of wires you're going to get on the uh, terminal side you've got two speaker outputs right here they look to be about eight gauge ish they might be ten gauge um, again it's really tough to judge sometimes on these especially when they don't spec out what they are um, and of course these are supposed to be four gauge terminals. Um, I've already, since I've had the thing here, I've already tried to put my four gauge reducer uh, into these uh, power terminals and they don't fit. So probably more like six gauge. If there was a five gauge, it's probably more apt to what it is. Um, and that's really just if you're using a reducer. I mean, if you're just using straight wire, um, you're gonna be able to get it in there. Um, but for me, I have zero gauge wire that I need to reduce Zero gauge would never fit in there. So that's why I tried to use a four gauge reducer. I didn't use it. So I'm gonna have to use a zero, zero gauge to four gauge reducer connected to a four gauge to eight gauge reducer <laughs> to get my power wire connected into this. Uh, it's not gonna do anything to the current flow. It's still gonna have plenty of current flow going to this amplifier. Um, so with that being said, Let's strap it up. Let's see what we can get out of the audio pipe APMI 1500.
folks, final thoughts here on the AudioPipe APMI 1500. Um, yeah, not a not a bad amp. Um, it did fail its, to meet its ratings, both certified and uncertified. Um, got about 1,250 watts uncertified, and I think under 1,200 watts certified. I'll have to look at the video once I start editing to let you know the full number. Um, but 1,450 watts on dynamic. Um, well, that exceeds the ratings in the book of 1414, so not really a lie. Um, so you can expect to get that at least playing music with this amplifier, um, but if you're going to go try to compete in the SBL drag race, um, you really want that certified number to be up over that uh, 1400 watt number um, and not that be so low as it is. But um, is it a budget gem or a budget bust? Well, um, this amplifier you can buy for roughly 130 bucks brand spanking new. Um, you can even get the bigger series, the, the 2000 model. Um, you can get that, those for um, under 180 bucks. So this one in particular, 130 bucks. You're gonna get 1400 watts dynamic, 1250, put you 1250 uncertified. You're gonna be roughly, 11 cents a watt on the uncertified roughly nine cents a watt um dynamically so yeah comparatively speaking it is a budget gem um because like i said i would have really preferred the certified number to be the one that hit its ratings and be well above that dynamically but uh um with these budget amps you can't always get everything um one thing I should state, um, I, I did a couple of other tests with this um, off camera, not this time, um, a couple more runs just to see how the amp um, performed. And um, after several certified runs, it did get warm to the touch. Um, usually, you know, amplifiers I do that with um, don't get as warm this fast unless I'm running like 0.8 ohms or something crazy. Um, so keep that in mind that this thing gets a little warm. Um, what that means, you know, take it for what it's worth. Um, usually you don't want the, the amp getting that warm, um, especially something this small, um, because that could uh, shorten its longevity. And again, this is a budget amp. It's probably pretty budget inside. Um, but other than that, you know, nice job audio pipe. Um, got another budget gem on our hands. So, till next time, I got more amps to test.